Folks, welcome back to another episode of How Much Money. Wait, what even shakes the camera? Look at that. So my patron, also known as Ardent.com, which is, uh, he always uses his business address on his PayPal. I don't know why he does that. Anyway, so today, we are getting near the end of only two more videos left of Double Masters Collectors. The draft series already been retired. Um, beautiful case of eight, didn't she? So we are going to prep this thing as we always do. We're going to talk about what's happening as I do the setup here. And uh, she always looks nice, doesn't she? Here's a thumbnail for you guys, right? I don't know, how about that? Know, who cares? So, folks, hope everyone's having a good day. Overall, uh, market is preparing for this new Dominaria. And now, as of the film of this video, I'm starting to hear rumors about textured cards in Dominaria. Not just the Legends cards that were hidden. We're talking about textured cards also hidden. I, I, dude, Wizards is not holding back. Like, I don't know if they're just deathly afraid of all these collector boxes tanking in price. Crimson Bow, Midnight Hunt, Avengers Forgotten Realm, Streets of Barry Manilow, Boulder's Gate. Like, their collector box products are just falling apart. And it's been a pretty, pretty turbulent ride. And I feel like with this new price increase, you know, the risk level's never been higher. And we'll have some more videos talking about it. But it definitely appears that, well, they don't want to take a chance. They don't want to take any chances. And with the new price increase in Dominaria, everybody thought, including me, I thought just kind of putting the Legends cards kind of inserted into it, I thought it was going to kind of be enough to really add more confidence. But it appears, not only are they doing the Legends thing for the collectors, but it appears... Oh, I thought, oh, wait a minute, are we short a pack? Oh, there's four. But it appears they're actually going to be doing textured cards. Hidden in the collectors also to really help spice up. So we have Legends cards, textured cards, I guess stained glass lands or something. I mean, they're really, you can see that's one thing you got to give Wizards credit for, man. Like when things are bumpy or rough or anything, you got to give Wizards credit because when they see problems, they may be slow to react because they're a big company and 45 layers of bobs and managements and lumbergs and coming on Sunday and TPS reports, but they do adjust. They will make changes, and they do evolve. They're just, well, unfortunately, many times they're, they're slow to react, and, well, sometimes that has some negative impacts on them. So, folks, here we go. Way on the left here. Box one, pack one, off to the races, collector packs. Enjoy it, folks. Again, I'd say market value on this video is very expensive, so I uh, hope you're enjoying this stuff because we don't have many left, and uh, this item is out of print. Beautiful unicorn, mythic number one, the mime. Nice little etched orchid there. And a gorgeous pithing needle. Not worth a ton, but a beautiful card for pack one, box one. Still haven't changed my attitude towards this product. Still one of the most undervalued products on the market right now. I mean, nice little blood braid. You guys ready? Infinite. Mr. K's command. Big ol' smothering tease. Look at that. In the etch. We have not seen that yet. That's very nice. And our young and, lo young, young and lovely Pan Harmonicon. Not bad at all, folks. So, I still believe these are $100 a pack, um, and they are better than VIP packs. So I think they will outperform them. Beautiful Cavern of Souls coming in. Boy, this is a really nice start to a video. Privileged Position, also known as the PP. And Hydroid Crasis. Jellyfish Hydra Beast, downshifted to rare in the edge. And look at that. There's a nice little, uh, little Grave Tide action. A little Borderless Extended Ultimate Masters Box Topper Showcase Foil. Very nice. Okay, not bad. Hydroid Crisis City, nice little uh, cavern over there, and a uh, nice little Grave Tide. Not a bad boy. Nice little, nice little diversity of cards and variants there. Very nice. All right, Sun Speaker, Anger of the Gods. Ooh, there is a spicy card, folks. The Altar in Etched, very nice rare, and Gifts Ungiven for the beautiful Borderless Foil. Very nice, folks. So I still think these packs and these boxes, like every ooh Path of Exile. A little Pride and Mage, Blessed Miss Witness, Unearth, Wall of Omens, beautiful artwork on that. We got the old Arbiter for the old kitty cat. Ah, uh, the Orary and all its beauty. And Nico Bolas, look at that. Nico Bolas and the Etched. And oh, God, look at that Force of Negation, man. Dang, it's a gorgeous card. Well, folks, we are uh, about at our halfway through pack two of box two. And uh, solid video so far, folks. Very solid start. Blood Artist, Grave Crawler, 
Ooh, beautiful borderless aether. Very nice. Sky Summoner for Disappointment and Ren and Stimpy. It is not textured. It is card number 334. That is a gore. God, that looks so good. No matter how many times you see certain cards, and that is one of them, that is just, it just takes your breath away, man. Such a beautiful card. Golly. We got the old, not, it's people, like, Rudy, what do you think of the old Rafik? People are like, Rudy, what do you think of the, the, everybody says like the fuck of the mini or something. It's, it's Rafik, folks. It's, I don't know. Another Ren Stimpy! Double tap and Ren! One foil, one none! And Chaos Warp for disappointing Saturday night. Okay. Hey, I'm not gonna complain. Uh, here we go. Pack four of box two and uh, double Ren and Stimpy with the old cavern. Uh, a double burning tree. That's a little strange, okay? Beautiful. Beautiful Miss Kalia. Very nice for the foil mythic. City a big old round ass. Always love the borderless city. Oh, here we go. Hostage Taker and the Bless. I still think Jumpstart. This is the same unicorn from Jumpstart, isn't it? That is our second unicorn of the video here. Uh, pretty solid video so far, folks. Um, definitely uh, a good diversity of hits. Beautiful Lightning Bolt. Flickery Whisper Roonies. We got the Savant coming in strong. Imperial Seal for the win. Borderless Seal. And Partisan for lack of caring. And Supreme Verdict to make people hate you. Very solid. Wow. God, that Imperial Seal looks so good. I mean, not many times in life do I like a newer version of art better than the original. But God, that Imperial Seal is so good. That does it for me, man. All right, here we go, folks. Beautiful Archangel. I have your Bloom Tender Rooney. And, oh my God, don't tell me this is another Imperial Seal Full Monty. Oh my God! Oh my God! Two packs in. Box three, two packs. Two Imperial Seals, both borderless. One foil, one. That looks so good. Wow. Oh, God. Double Imperial in box number three, folks. Goodness gracious. Dang. Reveler. Damn! Coming in the nation. First appearance. As foretold, you know, I, I don't really care that much. And Mr. K's Command. Full Monty. So, folks, to wrap it up here, uh, box number three, I think it is. And here we go. We got the Growth Chamber. We got Boiler Works. We got Shiny Head Club, Swift Sphere, and Bringing Delight for Disappointment. A thousand Year Storm for Irritability. Bloom Tender for Nice and Happiness. And Assassin's Trophy for the Full Monty Rare. Very nice, folks. Very, very nice. Lightning Helix, Terminate, Inquisition, Rampant Growth, Mully Drift, Forbidden. Orchid. Very nice, folks. Smothering big old tees. All right, here we go, folks. Rider. And Glimpse the Unthinkable. Eh, not the greatest, not the greatest. Oh, well. Can't have every single one being double. <laughs> can't have every single one being double Imperial Steel. Am I right, folks? All right, Blood Braid Elf. We got the old ghost here for the Mythic. First appearance. But, hey, our first Eldrazi of the video. Just a regular. Borderless regular. Not foil, not textured. Very, it's still an Eldrazi. Gravecrawler, not a fan of Gravecrawler. In the etched, too washed out looking, not enough contrast on the ink, not a fan. Oh! Okay. Godly. Non-textured, borderless foil. Unbelievable. So, we had a pack, I'm sorry, we had a box with two Imperial Seals. And we just had a pack with two Eldrazi's. This is a flipping why. Ooh, Force Negation, OG artwork. Hardened Scales. Is this, a, is this a full Monty smothering tea? It is. Big old smothering, big old teas. Godly. Excellent video today, folks. And again, you know, this is video, I think, number 8 out of 10. Uh, look at the uncommons, man. Look at that. Spectre, Experiment 1, Kozilek, Oracle, Burning Tree, Pride Mage, Burning Tree. What an amazing lineup of uncommons. Chaos Warp. Yeah, Restoration Angel and Oracle of Mudaya. Beautiful card. Great card. Love that card. You know, some, like I said, the more you open this stuff on a larger scale, the more you sit and just say, you know, sometimes, you know, there are some things that are close to a shoo-in. And this is as close to a shoo-in as you're going to get. Force of Negation, beautiful. Wayfarer. And Thousand Years. I mean, there's no guarantees. Anything can go to zero. Anything can happen. I mean, these things, these cards may be burned as firewood in the future when the world comes to an end. There's no guarantees in the world, folks. But at the same time... There are items in this world that have better risk-reward profiles. Does that make sense? 
Dreamer, Gifts Ungiven. We got the Liege in a privileged position again. Well, that's, uh, that's a disappointing two packs. And here we are, entering our little soft spell here. Spell Pierce, Swiss Fear, Swiss Fear. Aqueduct, so that's kind of disappointing. All right, here we go, folks. Merciless. Mr. T's Protection, first appearance of the video. And our second Chieftain. This is uh, actually uh, the etched version. And Mr. T's Protection again. That's creepy. Well, folks, it's looking like box five out of eight here in this video is going to be our bad performing box here. And okay, maybe Wizards of the Coast said, hold my chalupa, Rudy. Mana Volt coming in hot. Grand Arbiter. Una coming in. And Divining Top. Okay, that was a pretty good pack, man. Foil Mythic Mana Volt and a Divining Top Borderless in foil. That, all right, that was a pretty solid pack, folks. That was pretty solid. All right, so maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe we're going to have a little change here. Unearth, Lightning Bolts, very nice. Orary, very nice. Assassin's Trophy for the second appearance. Grand Arbiter for the third appearance. And the first Full Monty Foil Borderless Aether Vial. Gorgeous card. All right, here. So, like I said, it's tough to say. We still haven't hit a textured card. This may be our first case. Maybe we don't get a textured card. We're getting towards the end here. So, no textured yet. Glenelendra. Marchessa for the Richard Kane. Fury. And look at that. Jurassic Park. 69. Petting me on the head. I don't know. I like that stupid card. That art looks so nice. That's a great hit, though. That's a great hit. I still can't believe that card debuted in Jumpstart. So weird sometimes what Wizards of the Coast does. All right, here we go, folks. Coming in hot. Figure of Destiny. Crucible of Worlds with the beautiful feathers and angels for our first appearance in the video. Dusk Rose, double mythic pack, and the old battle axe for ending of disappointment. So we're about to wrap up box six of eight, folks. And uh, still, no textured. Inquisition, very nice in comments. All right, Greater Garg. Here we go. Also, there's two Gs. Privileged position. Again, I think we got a place at a privilege. Wait a minute, we got some hot coming in. We got something hot. Green Sun, by the way. There it is, folks. There it is. There it is. Kozilek Textured Mythic. Card number 576. There she is. Full Monty. Can you put you way off to the side? All right. So the uh, consistency of one textured card per case, it may hold true to the entire 10 video series. Pan Harmonicon. Godly. What a pack. Okay. Kozilek Textured. Next pack. Pan Harmonicon. Mana Volt. Rudy the Sphinx and Seasoned Pyro as a foil mythic head. Wow. That, now that was a nice pack, folks. No textured or, you know, crazy Eldrazi, but that was a good pack. Okay, we have a really good range of hits in this video, everybody. Excellent, excellent. All right, here we go. Cossage Taker. Supreme Verdict for Irritability. The Liege. And the uh, City of Big Ol' Asses in the borderless foil this time. Our second appearance of the ass. And that, we have one foil, one non-foil. Okay. It's a nice little, little, little split, little changing things up there. Flickery Wisp. Ah, we got Mr. Tree. Ah, Oracle of Mudaya. Yes, I know. You're cute and you always give me that evil look. Uh, I hate seed. Oh, what, is that Reddit in, in Facebook in the background? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, Crossroads. I haven't seen you all video. First appearance there. Full Monty. Okay. That's a nice one. So we are wrapping out box seven of eight, getting to the end here. And, uh, well, turned out pretty good. All right, Renegade. We got Miss Double Ds. Double Ds with the Richard Kane art. And Double D. Really? Two Double Ds in the same pack. Ooh, and an altar. Two Double Ds, which is Quad Ds in an altar. Excellent. All right, folks. Box number eight. Um, at this point in time, I'll be honest with you, we've hit Eldrazi multiple times. We got the textured card from the case. We've already hit two Imperial Seals. We've, I mean, another Dragon Lord. <laughs> Our fourth or fifth privileged position. Oh, is that? No, I was like, holy crap. Kozilek, a drop, really? Textured and foil. We got one of each. Okay, well, that's a great start to the last box of the video. I'm not going to complain about that. Jeez. Abbott, Season Pyro. Don't underestimate that card. Unthinkable and Grim Flare for the Richard Kane crazy insanity artwork. So we're getting ready to wrap this video up here, folks. Another 15-minute journey of really learning about these products and how they uh, distribute them. 
print runs and all that fun stuff. Hey, Sensei's Divining and the Gifts Ungiven. Uh, the, now, the top looks pretty good in Etch. That looks really nice. Some cards do, some cards don't. Like I said, the uh, Grave Crawler, I think Damnation. There's certain cards that just look what, terribly done. You, like, they didn't adjust the colors correctly on the card. It just looks like it's faded. All right. Mr. K's command. Another Panham Marnicon. Mr. K in Marchessa Richard Kane. All right, Dr. Ardent. As always, thanks for being a long-term kind patron. Everything in the video is headed your way. Ladies and gentlemen, after this, we've only got two Double Masters videos left in the queue over the next week or so. And uh, that's it. I think I've got one or two Boulder's Gate left in the queue. And that's it. we got one or two of the new white sets in queue. And uh, box opening queue will be caught up. Things are kind of calming down. Um, I still stand by th this product. Like I said, there's no free lunch. There's no easy money and guarantees in this world. But there's no way in the next 12, 24 months these boxes are going to be $300 or $320 or whatever they are with shipping and tag. Let's just say $320. There's no way these prices are going to stay away. They're going to be $100 a pack, which means I would expect TCG Player to be $400 to $450 for a collector box. And I know, Rudy's pumping, yeah, Rudy's pumping. Well, you know, like, you know your stepsister's cute. But I, I do think that, um, I think the market's going to remain very uh, sloppy and sluggish. But the good news is I, I still... I know people have been ridiculing me and making fun of me and all that stuff. And, you know, that's okay. I, mean, I, got my, I got my big boy pants on, which means I'm wearing nothing. And I, do, I still do think that um, I think we may have a bottom in place. And uh, it looks like we're starting to stabilize and march forward. And I remain very optimistic and bullish going into the end of the year, moving into 2023, that uh, market conditions will be a lot better than the disaster of 2022, which, you know, peaked with the collapse and release in the summer with Boulder's Gate. And the fire selling of raising of capital and stores and everything that happened. I think I think we're going to leave this era behind. And I think we're going to talk about it for many years to come. And I think it's sad that a lot of stores and a lot of people were knocked out. And a lot of smaller accounts with distributors and smaller LGSs were just, you know, they were knocked out from it. And I think that's a tragedy. You know, it's always a tragedy when Wizards, you know, Fs up big time and releases Boulder's Gate and bait and switches everybody calling it Commander Legends 2 and... And it causes people to lose substantial amounts of money and it shakes the system and stores go out of business, relationships get burned. And I think the whole thing's just, it's a shitty thing. But I do remain positive. And I think by the time people realize the market has shifted, especially whether it's the stock market, which actually as the film of this video, stock market is way off the bottoms. And now people are starting to believe that we may have a bottom in place. And unfortunately in life, you know, the only thing about calling a top or calling a bottom in life is that you don't really know it's the top or you don't really know the bottom's in place until 6 or 12 months later goes by and you can turn around and look behind you. That's one of the crappy things about our society and, you know, economic conditions and data and metrics is that we don't know when the bottoms officially happen. So you have to speculate all the time because by the time they happen, it's too late. By the time we all realize it and it's not a dead cat bounce, ooh, the market, you know, the bear market rally... You know, by the time, you know, all this stuff shifts and the market conditions do improve, everything's repriced and most people miss out like they always do. And that remains the tragedy of modern capitalism in the United States is that the average person never really makes money. And the average person never really builds wealth. And the average person never really buys low. And the average person always lives in fear that it's always going to get worse and then things turn and they miss out. And that's been happening for you know, since the dot-com era, you know, 2001 era, 2008 era, the dip in 2012, the dip in 2017 or 18, the crash of 2020, and now the crash of 2022 during the summer. It's, it's, it is what it is, folks. Hope you learned something today. As always, appreciate the kindness, support, and the honor and privilege to entertain everybody. Have a beautiful day.